All right, welcome to what we're going to be doing today. If you guys look at this here, these are the points on the IV syllabus that we're going to be talking about electricity, mainly resistance, and Ohm's law. If you're working along in the ISM note packet, you can probably find these syllabus points so that you know where we're at. Let's get started. You have to define resistance. And here it is. Boom! Pause it. Write it down. Love it. You might be tempted to say that resistance is how much a conductor will impede the flow of electricity or how much it squeezes it. And that's kind of true, but as far as a good definition to write down, it is simply a ratio. And if you want to see that in writing, the equation just looks, here's R, and it is just a ratio of the voltage, capital V, over the current. And it's measured in ohms, which, can't spell, which is a big omega sign, or a horseshoe. And this breaks down into a volt per amp. So an ohm, you need to know, breaks down into a volt per amp. Simple as that. And now you have to use this equation about resistance of conductors. And this little rho guy here, it's a Greek symbol rho, that is resistivity. Each conductor has its own level of resistivity. Capital L, that's the length of your wire or conductor. And A is your cross-sectional area. And there's a drawing that I'm going to call figure 5.4. And let's say we've got a wire made of copper. We've got another wire that's made of, let's say, nichrome, which is an alloy. They are going to have different resistances because this row will be different. And so copper will have super low resistance because it has a low resistivity. And nichrome will have a higher one because it just has a different row or resistivity value. If you have things of different lengths, let's say you've got a copper wire that zoomed in looks like this, and you've got another copper wire that has the same width, but it's like this. They're both copper. Then this equation says if L is big, R is big. So here, R is. Small. And here, R is big. And you can probably guess if you have an area that is a big fat wire, then that's going to have a low resistance because it's on the denominator. Seems to make sense. And now it's getting serious. We're going to state Ohm's law. And I am going to state that right here. Read that. Write it down and love it. And we're going to make some graphs as well. I'm going to call this figure 5.5. And so let's make a graph for an ohmic conductor. And let's say that we have voltage on the x and current here. If it's proportional, it starts at the origin, and it's a straight line because they are proportional. If, it, if, it du if voltage is here and then it doubles, then the current will double also. Let's say we have something like a filament, like an old school light bulb. We got our same graph, voltage and current. 
it might start out proportional, but then as you increase the voltage, since the filament is heated up a little bit, the current can't keep up with that increase in voltage because the resistance is going up. So it will taper off like this. And when you have a steep gradient, you have a low resistance. Here, where you have not steep, that means you have a higher resistance. Because as all metals heat up, then they don't conduct as well. The resistance goes up, and they actually no longer obey Ohm's law, because temperature has to remain constant for a metal. Let's say that you have something crazy like a diode. Like, let's say, a light-emitting diode, or like an LED. You have some crazy stuff happening there. The voltage goes up, no current, no current, no current, then you get a dump of current when you hit a very particular voltage. That's it.